booktube sarah here and welcome to my channel today i am coming to you with another weekly reading vlog so this is the first day of the vlog it is saturday november the 10th and it's about three o'clock in the afternoon i thought i'd sit down with you guys right now and um uh, quickly do my like first little clip of these vlogs um where i show you guys <clears throat> excuse me what i've been knitting on and stuff like that i also have a little book haul to show you guys as well in this clip um, I will come back later tonight and kind of give you an update on my reading, but it, like I said, it's only 3 o'clock. I still plan on doing a lot of reading today, so I'll pop back on here around 10 or 11 or something like that tonight and, um, and give you guys a reading update for the day. Um, but like I said, for now, I thought I'd show you my knitting. I got a lot of knitting done this week. Got a lot of reading done uh, this week, too, that just passed. Um, if you watched my last vlog, you saw that I finished nine books. Um, uh, in a week, so that's pretty good. Um, but anyway, um, time will tell what I finish this week. Uh, the reason I got so much reading and knitting done last week, if you are new or you didn't watch last week's vlog, is because um, due to medical reasons, stress-related medical reasons, I am off work currently. Um, I am on um, leave from work for a, a little bit. Um, right now, they're tentative saying the uh, 2nd of January. A part of me is actually hoping, a big part of me is hoping it'll be sooner than that. Um, I have a follow-up appointment with my doctor on the 4th of December, and I guess we will kind of go from there and make a decision to see how I'm doing. Um, I've had a lot of cardiac tests done, and I have counseling appointments scheduled and things like that. So, you know, a plan is in place of, of things to do to, to kind of help out with the stress. It's, it wasn't just stress, it was also cardiac issues that I was having, um, palpitations, some chest pain, some shortness of breath, stuff like that. So my cardiologist and family physician both just felt it was best for me to take a little leave from work um, because work has been extremely stressful over the last couple of months. But anyway, all that being said, um, that's just the kind of quick explanation as to why I got so much work done on my knitting. But let me show you guys and reading last week. Um, and I probably will continue that this week as well. So let me show you, start with my knitting. I will start with my, as I was calling them, my work socks. These are the socks that I, I, I like to have a pair of socks to take to, to work, to work on at lunchtime. Um, but because I'm not working right now, um, I thought I would work on them at home. And um, I want to try and get these done, and I have another pair of socks that I've already got cast on. I want to finish them as well, because I'd really like to start my Christmas socks. My goal is to be able to start those by the 1st of December. So I have another few weeks to go, um, but yeah, I'm really hoping to get them done. So these are the Hermione's Everyday Socks. The pattern is a free pattern by Erica Luter, and the yarn I'm using is from Spun Right Round, and it's called... Um, Combat boots and baby doll dresses. <laughs> if you guys have been watching for a while, you've seen these for many weeks. But that's where I was when I showed you guys last Saturday. So I got a lot done, including putting the heel in. So that's always exciting. So these are actually almost done. I've got about three more inches on the leg, and then I'll have this done. I should actually have these completed, I'm hoping, by Monday. Um, I'm going to do some more work on them tomorrow and stuff like that. So yeah, these have been really, really mindless. A great knit. I just love having another pair of socks. Um, it was funny, I was over at my mom's yesterday and I was sitting in our living room and of course I didn't have my shoes on, um, but I had my socks on and my mom comments, she goes, did you make those socks? And she points to the ones I'm wearing and I'm like, if I'm wearing a pair of socks, I made them because I actually no longer wear store-bought socks. I have about 30 pairs of hand-knit socks, so I have a ton of them that I can wear. So yeah, I'm super happy with these. This is the second sock. I've got the first one already done. So, like I said, I'm hoping to have these done um, possibly on Monday, so I'll have them to show you guys finished next week, which is always exciting. Um, so that is the first thing. The second thing, same, is not as is not interesting either. I mean, really, the socks to show you guys every week, they're not interesting. This isn't interesting. It, other than it getting a little bit bigger, it's pretty much the same thing. But this is my sweater, or going to be my sweater. This is the Rose Pattern by Andrea Mowry. And um, I got quite a bit of this done. You do this, you knit this in four quadrants. So this is still just the first quadrant, but that's like, this is all that I've gotten done since, you know, I started it. But my little fish stitch marker here is where I was last Saturday. So I've gotten all this done. And I do plan on doing more of this, working more on this tonight. Um, what I have done now, I've actually finished the pattern, like this, this uh, cable, this beautiful cable here. That's done, and actually, as you can see, I've started to bind it off, and you actually make it, uh, like, you cast off stitches at this point in the pattern because this is going to be the neck shaping. So, essentially, I believe this is a back panel, so I'm not exactly sure how it goes, but, you know, I'll show you guys once we start putting it together. It'll look a lot better, but yeah, this is, this is moving along relatively quickly, 
and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, the yarn I'm using is from Knit Picks. It's, it's an acrylic yarn. I do love an acrylic yarn for a sweater because it is wash and wear. I can throw it in the washing machine. I don't have to worry about it shrinking or growing or anything like that. I can hang it up in my closet for years and never have to worry about any moths getting at it or anything like that. Um, it's indestructible pretty much. Acrylic yarn is brilliant for that. And the colorway is called Seraphin. Isn't that pretty? It's going to look awesome. So this is going to be an extremely oversized cardigan. Um, if you're looking and thinking it's kind of big, but if you're new to the channel, um, essentially the way this kind of goes is this is the arm, this, this thin part here. So this is like where you're, you're right. And then the cable runs up here and then the larger part is what would go across like this area here of your body. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a really neat construction, which is the other reason I want to knit it. Not only do I think the sweater is pretty, but I just think it's a really neat construction a little challenging um in a way so it'll be really fun to see it all come together so like i said i do plan on getting a bit more work done on that tonight and then of course during the week and then the last thing guys are my fingerless mitts and they look amazing oh i saved them for last because i you know i don't like to play favorites with my knitting but these right now have to be my favorites and i showed them to my mom and she kind of went oh i'd love a pair of those but my mom's not a fan of fingerless mitts she likes full mittens so i'm gonna knit another pair of these when i'm done um, but I'm gonna, um, instead of making them fingerless, I'm just gonna continue and just do like a mitten up here and just close them in. Um, and I have a beautiful blue yarn that I'm gonna use for that. Mom's favorite color is like blue. And it's a dark jean blue. It's really pretty. But let me show you these. Oh, these are so pretty. So this is, um, the pattern is called Something Wicked. And it's by Kristen, who does Vol and Vine yarns. Look at the cables on those, you guys. Isn't that stunning? Oh, I just absolutely love it. So I have finished, I'm, I'm almost done the, um, the, the actual mitt part. I've got a couple more rows to go and then I just do a little bit of ribbing here and then, and then I just finish the thumb. So the thumb is actually done on this. So let me take off my rings because I don't want them to get caught on anything and I can actually show you guys. So this is a left and a right mitt. So depending on which one you're knitting, um, uh, left or a right. So Sorry about the cables, or not the cable, but yeah, the, the needles and stuff like that, but you can kind of see, isn't that, and then I've got the thumb hole already in there, which is very cool. These knit up so quickly. So that, the owl is where I was last Saturday, so that's what I've gotten done. And yeah, I am super pleased with them. I love, love, love that cable. I just think it's beautiful. The yarn I'm using is from Sunrise Fiber Co. She's one of my favorite indie dyers. Um, she no longer dyes yarn, and I'm, I'm not... Not as much as she used to. I think she still does on occasion, but not as much as she used to. Um, but this, the colorway is called Pumpkin Spice, which is like my favorite thing. So yeah, I think they're absolutely gorgeous. The only, um, uh, the only thing I changed in the pattern is originally this, now my, um, my Fitbit's kind of making it look kind of funny right now. But the only thing I changed in the pattern is that I actually made this longer, this ribbing section longer, because in the pattern it called for you to only do half of the amount that I did. And to me, I, want, I like having a longer cuff on it because I want to be able to tuck it up under my winter coat. That's the whole point is just to keep your hands warm, right? So yeah, so that's why I did that. But I just think they're absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, she said something wicked. It was meant to mimic like tree roots and stuff like that. So yeah, absolutely beautiful. So I'm really, really happy with them. And of course, oops, as I flick my rings around, I have to show you guys the bag that they're living in because um, if you're doing using a yarn called pumpkin spice you have to use the pumpkin spice bag <laughs> this is from suburban stitcher this was a one-off she did not not like this isn't the only one she had this fabric custom made and she made bags and i was lucky enough to get my hands on one when they went on sale this was a couple of years ago um if you are new and you don't know i am a huge i'm a pumpkin spice girl 100 percent um, but I had to have this, like even the things say PSL on them, like hello. So I had to get this bag and I use this bag every chance that I get. It's got a nice handle on it and everything, but yeah, I absolutely love these. Um, I cannot wait to get those mittens done cause they are going to be fantastic. So as I said, just let me put my rings back on so I don't forget. Um, I have a little book haul here that I didn't pay anything for guys. Like these were free. Free is always good. Um, so what happened was, like I said, these are from last week. These are from last Sunday, actually. So like a week ago, <clears throat> when I go to Bingham with my mom on Saturday or Sundays, which I do plan on doing, uh, tomorrow, even though right now I'm not really working and I'm only going to be getting a small amount of, like a smaller amount of money, um, from, um, from everything going on. 
um, I can still go and spend $20 to get out for the day. My husband's like, go, $20 is not going to make us or break us, you know, go and enjoy yourself kind of an idea. So when I do go to bingo, there is a bookcase at the bingo hall, like this big bookcase. And I often take books in and I, you know, occasionally I'll find one like an old Desire novel or a couple old Harlequin Presents novels and stuff like that. That's typically what I find. Somebody has brought in, had brought in last week the, a collection. And I had to stop myself from literally grabbing all of them because I didn't want to look like a completely greedy little pig. Um, they were brand new Presents novels and Harlequin Special Editions. Brand new, you guys. Um, so I jokingly said to my mom, the book gods were smiling, or book karma was smiling down on me because I'd brought so many books in. And I mean, pretty decent books too. Some some newer releases and stuff like that that I had, I had on paperback or, or hardcovers I had brought in. Um, so I guess the, uh, the book gods were smiling on me or book karma, whatever you want to call it. So I got a bunch. I, I stopped myself at one, two, three, four, five, six. I only got seven. I was being good, you guys. Um, but let me go through and show you guys these. So bear with let me just, okay. So following for the wrong brother by Michelle Major, the first book in the Maggie and Griffin series. I talked about this one as one of my anticipated reads. Um, for my Harlequin Anticipated Reads. This one came out in September. I don't even think it's been read, or if it has been read, you know, the person was very, very careful with it. Do you know what I mean? All of them are in this condition. I cannot get over it. So yeah, so I got that one. I picked up that one. I got her last Lost and Found Baby by Tara Taylor Quinn. I love this author. She's an absolute favorite of mine. Um, and yeah, I was super thrilled to get this one from August of this year. How to Romance a Runaway Bride by Terry Wilson. This one does have a little mark on it here, but I'm not going to complain. They were free. Um, this one is from July um, of this year. And I believe this is the second book in the Heart series, the Heart Family series. And I read the first one, Wild Hearts is the name of the series. And I read the first one, which is the one about the ballerina who had lost her hearing. And it was really, really good. So this is the second one. So I'm really excited to have this one. Another one that I believe was on my anticipated reads, and that is How to how A Maverick to Remarry, and this is by Christine Rimmer, uh, the Montana Mavericks, the Lonely Hearts Ranch series. Super happy to have this one too. Um, July of 2018, if there's any more of these tomorrow when I go, you know gosh darn well I'm scooping them up because they were all like from this year. This was, here was the really cool part, you guys. Almost a Bravo, again, by Christine Rimmer. Um, I don't think this is part of the Lonely Hearts Ranch series from October. This was my October anticipated reads. This is just from last month. I think somebody has a subscription and they just brought them in. Do you know what I mean? I also got, uh, the second book in the Maggie and Griffin series, Second Chance in Stone Creek, again by Michelle Major. Also from October of this year. Very exciting. And last but not least, you know, I wish I kind of had this one in October because this would have been great. This is Unmasking the Maverick by Teresa Southwick, uh, another one part of the Lonely Hearts Ranch. But there is a jack-o'-lantern, so this obviously takes place at Halloween. I will definitely be reading this one um, come Halloween next year. Definitely, this is going on the list. So yes, so that's my little mini book haul. And like I said, um, if there are any left when I, when I go to bingo tomorrow with mom, I'm definitely going to scoop them up. The really cool thing is, is because so many people come in and out of the bingo hall, and a lot of people do bring books and leave them there. Like it's, you know what I mean? Like use it like a little free library that stuff changes all the time. So it's, it's kind of fun that typically I find stuff and I do always try and bring a few things in because I am trying to clean out this bookshelf behind me and I do like bringing stuff in so that, um, you know, kind of a trade away kind of an idea. So yeah, so there's my little, like I said, my little mini book haul as well. So anyway, guys, that is it for this little clip. I, as I, as promised, I will come back like around 10 o'clock tonight, I guess. And I will do a reading update for the day. And until then, I'll see ya. Bye guys. Hi guys. It is Sunday, November the 11th and it's almost nine o'clock at night. I apologize for not coming back with a clip last night of an update on my reading. But truth be told, I did not get a lot of reading, more reading done last night. Um, and I don't think I updated you on my reading at all yesterday. So I apologize for that. I will do that in this one. Um, but first of all, before I get into that, um, this afternoon, the husband and I went to go see Bohemian Rhapsody in theaters. And if you are at all on the fence about seeing it, you're not sure it was so good. Now I am not, 
I up until I have not been a like I, I I know Queen's music because it's in popular culture. I watched Wayne's World a hundred times like everybody else did of my generation. Um, so I'm familiar with, you know, some of the songs and things like that. But I didn't realize when, when we were in the theater, I just kept thinking, they did that song? They did that song? Um, but it was so, so good. I will admit I cried a little bit, but I'm a very overly emotional person. <laughs> um, it was a really, really good movie. Really good. All the actors did an amazing job. Um, and yeah, I absolutely recommend it. And I know the hubby really enjoyed it as well. So yeah. Um, so that was the big event of today. Um, reading update. So I just finished, which is what prompted me to sit down and talk to you guys. I just finally, finally finished listening to The Last Castle by Denise Kieran, Kier, Kierden, um, narrated by the author. This was obviously on audio. I enjoyed it. Four stars. Um, I didn't, it didn't blow me away. Um, you know, it, but it was still extremely interesting and really, really entertaining. Um, so it's the story of the Biltmore Estate in Asheville, North Carolina, which of course was built by the Vanderbilts. Um, it is the largest or was the largest, I think it might still be, at one time it was the largest privately owned home in North America, I think, or in the U.S. I'm not too sure exactly the classification, but pretty much um, it tells of not only the history of the home itself, but of course its occupants, um, the Vanderbilts. And um, so it was built by George, and then um, it was occupied by him and then his wife, um, I think 10 years after building started on it, and it still wasn't completely finished at the time of his death. Um, or I think even at the time of her death, I think the music room they said in the book wasn't completed until the 1970s or something like that. So it talks about them, their friends, their families, and how it all kind of centers around this home um, and their history and stuff like that. The history of the house and how after he passed away, um, you know, where the holdings went and where the house went. And the house is actually still in the family. Um, it's run um, as a trust by uh, uh, George and Edith's great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, I think. And, uh, yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. Um, like I said, it was narrated by the author. Not, I wasn't 100% sold on the narration. Um, some, uh, like, some authors can narrate and some can't. I mean, she did an okay job. It wasn't horrible. But, I don't know, maybe somebody could have done it a little bit better. But I guess because it's nonfiction. So this wasn't the first book I read for nonfiction November. Um, because it was nonfiction, um, you know, maybe, you know, they figured it wasn't, you didn't need to, like, act it out essentially still as i said highly enjoyable if you are interested in all in american history in um you know in the vanderbilts or in that gilded age then you know you might really really enjoy this book um a lot of re really neat and interesting tin tidbits in this book like they were actually the ones who started like forestry like forestry school and going to school to do that they it was on the biltmore estate it was really really interesting and i i kind of I would love to go and see it. I think it would be amazing to go see. Um, but at the very end in the epilogue, she's talking and she said that um, the current admin price to get in the doors um, on a regular day, it's more expensive for the holidays because it would be all decked out for the holidays, um, is like $65 US. Like, And that was in 2016, I think. That's insane. Um, but it doesn't just get you into the house. I mean, it would get you on the grounds and, and all these things and stuff like that. So I still think it would be pretty neat to go and see. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I finished that today. Four stars. I enjoyed it. Um, and I'm currently reading Sweet Dreams Baby by CJ Carmichael. I'm still reading this one. I did not get a lot of actual ebook reading done this weekend. So I'm hoping to actually finish this one tomorrow. Um, this one is the 12th and final book in the Love at the Chocolate Shop series. And it is about Portia. And um, at, you meet her, I think I talked about this in my last vlog, but in case you didn't see it, you meet her at the very, very beginning of the series. And she is like kind of dropped out from college and um, just shy of getting her degree. And so she's not young. She's in her early 20s. And um, she ends up like she she doesn't even know she's pregnant when the series first starts. So the series kind of follows over the course because it takes place over the course of a year, this series. Each book take, taking place in a different month. So you kind of follow her pregnancy and then she had the baby about three months ago and now her ex-boyfriend is in town and he's the father. So 
the story's gonna go from there. So like I said, I'm, I'm hoping to get this one done tomorrow. I did en I am enjoying it so far. I really, really enjoyed this entire series. Um, and my current, I'm not reading a print book right now. I was actually, I showed it. I realized when I was editing my vlog yesterday that I showed it, but I never updated you guys because I lost it. I couldn't find the book. I had put it down somewhere and I found it just yesterday. And I thought, well, should I go ahead and start it? And I thought, no, no, no. So I put it back on my shelf. I'll pick it up at a later date because I've got another book I'm going to start um, probably tomorrow or something like that. Um, it's the one that actually you guys picked for me for the um, Harlequin Anticipated Reads uh, video that I do every month. Um, the Mavericks Christmas... I want to say the Mavericks Christmas to Remember, but I'm not absolutely certain. I'll talk about it in, in the next day or so. Um, so I'm not reading any print books currently. Oh, I am actually reading a print book, and I completely forgot to tell you. I haven't shown you guys, and I've been reading this for like a week. I'm reading Sawbones um, by Justin and Sydney McElroy, which is a nonfiction novel. So like perfect for nonfiction November. And it is, if you like the podcast Sawbones, it's, it's based off the podcast Sawbones. And it's weird medical history. I'll try and remember when I when I record my clip tomorrow. I'll put a picture of it up here now for you guys just to see the cover of it. But tomorrow, I'll maybe I'll have the book to hold. We'll see. Um, but I'm about 60 or 70 pages into that, and I'm really enjoying it. Before I go to bed tonight, at, at night, I read just a few pages, like 10 pages or so. And then I put it down because it <clears throat> it's weird medical history, so it can get kind of gross. Um, and I don't want to you know, I might be susceptible to nightmares, so I don't want to kind of do that before bed. But yeah, no, I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, but my current childhood book um, is currently the sixth book, I believe, in the Nancy Drew, the original Nancy Drew series, which is The Mystery at Redgate Farm, I think is what it's called. And I'm only a few chapters into this one. Um, but Nancy and her cousins, Bess and George, um, meet up with a woman on a train um, a younger, not a younger girl, like a young girl, but like in her like late teens, early 20s. Um, a young woman, I should say, on the train. And um, she faints on the train and they, you know, what's going on? And she's applying for this job and, you know, Nancy decides to show her where this interview is because she's not familiar with town. And it turns out to it seems to be very seedy. So I'm interested to see where it's going to be going. But yes, so far I'm enjoying it. Like I said, I'm only a few chapters in. But anyway, guys, that is it for my update for today. I hope you liked. Um, and yeah, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. Say hi. Hi, guys. It is Monday, November the 12th, and it's about 1030 at night. And as you can see, I've got the Gorn with me. He is very perturbed right now because he was walking by and I grabbed him. So I'm going to let him go now. <laughs> Sorry, Gorgor. So anyway, like I said, it is Monday. As you can see... The tree is up. Um, that was not supposed to happen till next weekend. Um, tradition for me is that the Christmas tree goes up on the Sunday of the Toronto Santa Claus Parade. Because that is kind of the official start to the Christmas season, in a way. It's when Santa arrives at the mall and when Santa arrives in the city. So that's when your Christmas tree goes up. But Garrett, who in all the years that I've known him could take or leave a Christmas tree. He, you know, he didn't really, it was for me. I am the one with the Christmas stuff. I am the one who loves all the Christmas stuff. Sorry, I'm petting the cat now. Um, you know, all that stuff. He's, you know, okay, fine, whatever. But this year, for some reason, he was gung-ho on putting the tree up. And I think it's because this year we have a white Christmas tree. Every other year, I've always been a stickler. Christmas trees are green. You know, like it's a green tree with lights on it. But Garrett really wanted a white one and blah, 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 blah. So our old tree had seen better days. So we bought this new one just a few weeks ago. And it's been in a box in the back, like in the closet. And he put it up today. I don't think the ornaments or the star or anything like that are going to go on it until uh, next weekend. Um, but yeah, for right now, the tree is up. Um, but it, it, it is pretty, isn't it? <laughs> It's actually very cool. Okay, so I'll tell you. It cost us $60. We're, we're not big spenders on stuff like this. Um, you know, I don't care that it's, you know, if you look at it closely, you can see that, you know, it's not the fullest looking tree or anything like that. It is a pre-lit, um, but the lights can turn from white, like pure white lights, to the colored lights, which is what I prefer. If you're going to have a white tree, you want colored lights. That's just my opinion. Um, and they also blink. <laughs> when I came into the apartment, when I got home tonight, he had them blinking. I'm like, no, that has to stop. <laughs> it's a little too much. 
but I'm glad it's not a permanent thing. Like I can just turn it like this. So it'll be nice for videos um, because the blinking I think would just be far too much. Um, so yeah, so, um, so yeah, so like I said, it was like $60 and it was from Walmart. So you know what? If it lasts us two or three Christmases, I am perfectly happy. So yeah, so the tree is up. But no other de decorations are really going to go up until probably next weekend. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much the big thing that happened today. Like I said, I was out with my mom today. Um, I've got to go. I'm busy tomorrow as well. Tomorrow's what, Tuesday? Tomorrow I'm going over to my mom's as well again um, after I drop off Garrett at work because um, because we live in an apartment, there are washing machines in the basement, but they're smaller. And I want to do towels and bed sheets and stuff like that. And so I don't have to do like two or three loads. I can do like one load at my mom's. So I'm going to take them over to her house tomorrow and I'm going to do them there. And then her and I are going to go out for a little bit again. Um, and then Wednesday I have um, two appointments. I have one in the morning and then a cardiologist appointment in the afternoon. Um, but then Thursday, Friday, I've kind of got free. Um, you know, I, I am still kind of confused on days and stuff like that. Like I was sitting down here to record this and I'm like, it is Monday, right? Um, but yeah, but being off work has been a little, when you're used to, when I've worked every day for the past 20 years, um, you know, to be off and it not be a holiday, um, you know, not being off on holiday or, or on vacation or something like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's weird, but I feel good in case anybody's curious. I, I am feeling good. Um, I'm feeling better than I was. Um, I'm still having some palpitations and stuff like that. Um, I mean, it's all stress related. That's, that's all what this is, is stress. And, um, I need to, to, um, you know, talk to my doctor when I, when I go to see her on the 4th of December and see what kind of game plan we want. Like I've told you guys, I think I mentioned in my last vlog, but in case you didn't see it, I'm currently off of work um, until January the 2nd on stress leave. Um, so yeah, I, I've just been kind of really taking it easy, but it, it's been busy too. Like I've got appointments and I've got things to go to and stuff like that. So, you know, which is a good thing, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, trying to figure out, you know, uh, ways to try and work with the stress essentially. And thank you guys all so, so much for all of you with your kind comments. I really do appreciate it. I do have to get on and, and thank everybody individually. Um, but yeah, I really do appreciate it. Um, but I'm getting a lot of reading done. I'm getting some knitting done. Um, getting a lot of booktube watched on my downtime. Um, and yeah, so that is that um, reading-wise today. I got a lot. I started and finished a book today, essentially. Um, but I did not get any real ebook reading done t tonight so far or today so far. So my game plan is when I'm done recording this, I'm going to actually go and lay in bed. Um, I'm, I'm already in my jammies and I am going to lay in bed and, um, read, I think some of my ebook. Um, so the book that I started and finished today, sorry if the lighting keeps going in and out. I think it's because of the tree. <laughs> you have to figure out how to work with this. Um, so, um, I started and finished uh, Wicked Deeds by Heather Graham, which is book number 23 in the Crew of Hunters series. This one was really good. I enjoyed it. It takes place in Baltimore, Maryland, and it um, revolves around Edgar Allan Poe. And the ghost of Mr. Poe actually makes, like, he is like a secondary character in the story. Um, so these people have been killed, and they've been kind of left in ways that were reminiscent of Poe's stories, if that makes sense. Like one gentleman was found under the floorboards and it was during a seance that he was found. And because our, uh, the crew of hunters, the, the two uh, agents in the crew of hunters heard the heartbeat, you know, like the telltale heart kind of an idea. So yeah, so it was really good. Um, great if you're interested in, in history of Baltimore, history of Edgar Allan Poe. If you're a fan of his work, um, you might find this one really entertaining. Um, this story kind of deviates from the norm of the Crew of Hunters books, actually this book and the previous two, um, because all the previous books were each like about different characters. So each, each story was about two characters, um, one who was a member of the Crew of Hunters or was going to be a member of the Crew of Hunters, and then like a secondary person. Um, the last, so this story, Wicked Deeds, and I think it's Dark Rights, and I can't remember the one before that or which one was in the middle. Um, but the three stories prior to this, so books 21, 22, and 23, all follow the same two characters, Vicky and Griffin. Um, they met in the first book and their romance started there. Then it carried over to the next one and, you know, their story kind of continues and then into this third one. 
So it's it's a little bit of a departure from what you're used to with the crew of hunters, but it's still really really interesting, and I and I enjoyed it. It's kind of fun to to follow these characters and not just be like the story's done, and then you know eventually you'll see them maybe down the line they make an appearance in another book or something like that. But it's kind of fun to follow their continuing story and their adventures, if you will. So yeah, it was really good, really entertaining. Um, again, these stories are not just some, you know, ghosty, paranormal type romances. There is a lot of history that's involved in these stories as well. And that's what I really, really love about them. Um, so that's really all I got done for reading today. I did start a new book, but I got maybe three or four pages into it. And it's called Do You Feel It Too by Nicola Rendell, I want to say is the author's name. There's a picture. I'll, of course, put the cover up here so you guys can see it. Um, and it is about a man who is a, speaking of ghosts, he's a ghost hunter. That's what he does for a living. And he is back in Savannah, Georgia. I think that's his hometown. And he meets a girl. And from what I understand, this story gets very, very hot and heavy. The two of them have a physical relationship and they kind of get to an impasse in the relationship with where are we going to go from here? Kind of an idea. He's built his life on leaving, like on, he travels, like this is what he does. And she is, she wants to be in Savannah. That's where her business is and stuff like that. So I guess that's where the, the line, the story is going to go. So I'm going to do a bit more reading on this one tonight and, uh, and let you guys know what I think. Um, and I read some more of my Nancy Drew book today. Um, the Secret at Redgate Farm, I want to say it's called, or it's the Mystery at Redgate Farm. Something about a Redgate Farm, excuse me. And, um, I think I talked to you guys about this one yesterday. Nancy and her cousins, um, or Nancy, they're not Nancy's cousins. Nancy and her friends, Bess and George, who are cousins with each other. Um, they make appearances like going forward in like every book, every Nancy Drew book. And um, the old series, the, which is this one, and the more <laughs> recent series of the 1980s, um, the Nancy Drew Files. Um, they make appearances in that one too. Um, they meet a girl on a train and she kind of collapses and faints and then they decide to try and help her out and she's trying to look for a job because her grandmother has to sell their farm, the Redgate Farm. And, you know, there's a mystery with some woman selling perfume at this perfume shop and this strange man and, you know, all these things. Of course, it's Nancy Drew. Um, you know, so far it's cute and I'm enjoying it. Um, and yeah, that's about it. That's all I've really got today, you guys. Um, not too terribly interesting. Um... I am debating when I go downtown on Wednesday, depending on how long my first appointment takes, like my appointment in the morning. Um, I know the last time I had to go downtown to the hospital in the afternoon, it's a pain to find parking. If I have to go down in the morning, it's, it's not so bad because there's literally a parking lot right across the street. Um, but that parking the last time I went cost me $24 and I was there for like three and a half hours. I like to joke that that's the reason why healthcare in Canada is free is because we pay so much for parking at hospitals. <laughs> that's where the money goes. <laughs> um, but I know that because my appointment's not till three in the afternoon, I am going to have a, the hardest time finding parking. And the last time I had to go downtown in the afternoon, I ended up having to park like three streets over. And it's chilly, it's cold, it's supposed to be quite cold on Tuesday or on Wednesday. So I'm actually debating on depending on how long it takes me. I might take the train down, um, which would be kind of nice. I, I don't mind taking the GO train down and I can get on the subway and go to the hospital and kind of do my appointment and get back on the train and whatever. And it's kind of like a flat fee. I know exactly how much I'm paying. Whereas if I get held up for even 10 minutes at the hospital, you know, if you're past that hour point, you get charged the next $8 for, you know, the next hour of parking, even if you're like five minutes past or something like that. Um, so we'll see. I'll play it by ear. Um, but that'd be kind of fun because then I can record some stuff for you guys on the train going down, um, of the city and stuff like that. So, whereas when I'm driving, that makes it difficult. <laughs> but anyway, we'll play that by ear and we'll see what happens. I do want to get some clips of stuff outside of this apartment, outside of me just sitting here, which I'm sure is terribly boring for you guys. Um, but yeah, but anyway, guys, that is it. That's all I have for today. At least we have some different decoration in the background today with the tree, um, which is always super fun. And I did get an email today from um, my um, contacts at Harlequin for the Read Bliss videos for a video, a couple videos coming in December, and they both sound super exciting. I don't want to share with you just yet what they're going to be, but um, I will talk about them more when, um, you know, into early December um, when they are going to come out. So yeah. So if you are not subscribed to Read Bliss, um, please do. It's not just me. Um, there are several other booktubers. We have Ash from Ash Heart Books. 
Um, Steph from Steph's um, Rom, uh, book Romcom, I think. I'm sorry, Steph, if I, I said that incorrectly. Um, I believe Jess from Peace Love Books, and um, I don't know her name because I don't watch her channel. I'm so sorry. Um, the one from, um, is it Bookerly? She's, she's kind of like the new person now sort of doing these two. So yeah, there's, there's a bunch of booktubers and, um, we all put out different videos on different things and it's really fun. If you enjoy romance novels, go check it out. I'll leave a link to it. I'll try my best to leave a link to it in the description box below, but if not, the channel is called Read Bliss. So go and check that out for sure. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that is it guys. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Hi guys, it is Tuesday night. It is about 6.30 at, or just after 6 at night, and it is November the 13th today. Um, I have been busy today. I've been out for most of the afternoon, and I just got home, and I thought before I get down on the couch and start relaxing and, you know, uh, completely losing track of time, and it ends up being 11 o'clock at night, I should sit down and do my quick little recording for you guys. I do have a package that I got in the mail today that I want to open, so that's the other reason I wanted to sit down because I want to see what's in it too. Well, I know what's in it, but I'll, I'll explain in a minute. So today, um, I went out to, uh, to take Garrett to work and then um, I went over to my mom and dad's place because I wanted to use their washer and dryer. <laughs> um, why spend the $1.75 to wash my clothes per load and $2.50 to dry them when I can go over to my mom's and her and my dad are absolutely fine with it. They're like, yeah, come on over. And right now my niece and nephew, um, they don't have them this week. Um, my sister-in-law is on uh, a little break from work for the week. And um, so she's got the kids. So, you know, typically my mom babysits my nephew. Um, my niece is in school all day, but um, she doesn't have them this week. And I said, you know, I, I thought this would be a good time to come over because not that we do our clothes like once a month, but I said, you know, that way I won't disturb, you know, Jonathan. And my mom's like, come over whenever you want. She said, just know that his naps are between this time and this time in the morning. So if I did come over then, you know, he might be napping. So that's good to know. So going forward, I think every week I'm going to take my stuff over on like a Tuesday and do a couple loads. It doesn't take long. I can sit and relax, talk with my parents and whatever. So it's, it's kind of nice actually. And then I made a big boo-boo today. Um, in my last clip, I was probably telling you guys that um, I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow downtown. No, I don't. I had a doctor's appointment today. And the notification popped up on my phone at 10 after 3 and my appointment was at 3.30 downtown. There is no way, even if I had like a TARDIS, <laughs> I could have make it. <laughs> I've actually never seen Doctor Who, but I have a lot of friends who watch Doctor Who, so that's how I kind of sort of know what that reference is. Um, but yeah, unless I had some sort of like, you know, um, portal that I could step into and then step out of at the hospital, there was no way I was gonna make it in time. So unfortunately, I called them and I apologized. I said, I'm so, so sorry. For some reason, my brain was telling me it was Wednesday, but it was actually on Tuesday, so hopefully they can rebook me in, in the next month or so, and it won't be that big a deal. It's not a huge deal. Um, it's just a follow-up um, with the, it's my other cardiologist. I do have two. Um, it's the other cardiologist who deals specifically with my arrhythmia issues that I've been dealing with. So um, I know he wants to see me. It's not like, you know, oh, I can skip the appointment. It's not that big a deal. No, no, no. I, I do need to see him, but it's not a major issue. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I might have to call though and get my medication renewed depending on how long it's going to be before I can get an appointment because I'm almost out. I do know that the medication I'm on they're trying to get me off of or wean me off of because there are a lot of side effects to it that are not good. Um, one of them being um, uh, damage to your thyroid which I have already had. Um, I'm now on thyroid medication because of this other medication so joy. Uh, but anyway I mean that's being managed too. It is what it is. Um, but the medication that I'm on for the arrhythmia is not a long-term solution. So, um, you know, they're trying to wean me off of it. And I know that's partly what he wants to, we've already weaned me down quite a bit on it. It's not a narcotic in any way, shape or form. It's not like I'm addicted to it or anything like that. Um, it's just specifically because it d can cause a lot of damage, but it's also the kind of medication that you can't just suddenly stop taking. Um, you need to be like gradually taken off of it. I'm sure those of you who are, who are on different medications might understand. So anyway, that is that and that was my mistake. But luckily now I only have one appointment tomorrow morning. So then I've got the rest of the day free, which will be really, really nice. Um, you know, for being off um, on stress leave, I I've been actually quite busy. <laughs> 
I just, I feel like I just need a few days now. Like last week was quite busy. This week has been really busy. I just need some time to just sit in my pajamas all day. You know, like literally I, I will put on pants to go take Garrett to work and <laughs> coming home and putting back on my pajamas. The weather is nice and cool. It's pretty in my apartment with the tree up. I can, I can relax and enjoy, which is very exciting. So that's what's been going on today. Let's open the package, shall we? So it's books. I know, shocking. I ordered these like three weeks ago. It was a while ago. Um, part of the reason it took so long is like these do take long to come to me, which is fine. That doesn't bother me. But the other reason is Canada Post is currently on a strike here in Canada, which sucks. Um, my husband's waiting for something. I'm waiting for another package to come in the mail. But this is what I'm calling now my monthly order from the Amazon Marketplace with the, the used books, um, the used uh, Harlequin books and stuff. So I got this big package here that came in the mail. So, and my handy dandy scissors. So let's, actually, I don't even think I need to cut into it. Hold on. I don't. <clears throat> sorry, not sorry for the noise, guys. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six books. Yay! I don't know if this is all of them. I think I've already gotten one. A single one in the mail um, and I'm sorry I didn't open it on camera so I just kind of ordered these uh, this 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 <coughs> excuse me this order I went through all the Harlequins that I've been reading like physically reading I've been reading a lot of them but all the ones I've been physically reading and I looked at other books in the series and I tried to order off of that so this the first one here is ironclad cover and this is book the second book in the mission redemption series I read the first book earlier this year and I really, really enjoyed it. This is by Dana Martin. This is a Harlequin Intrigue novel and I'm very excited about it. Um, this is in really good condition actually. This is from a May of 20, uh, 2007. I always want to say 2007. 2007. So that one should be really good. Um, what else? I'm just going to go in here blind and just pull books out. Um, the next one is Behind the Billionaire's Guarded Heart by Leah Ashton. I don't think this was part of any series. I think I just ordered it because it looked cute. Um, but yeah. That one looks really adorable, a Harlequin Romance. It is a larger print. I do thoroughly enjoy these larger print ones. They are very good for reading later at night when your eyes are tired. Uh, next up we have, oh, speaking of large print, this was on clearance for a dollar. Her Road Home by Laura Drake. This is another larger print one. I believe, I believe, I believe, yes, it is too. So um, I read... Um, Twice in a Blue Moon, I think it was earlier this year by the same author, and it's it's this is part of the series, but it's not being labeled as a series, but it, it's the same characters, again, at large print. Um, so yeah, so I, I really kind of wanted to, to grab this one as well. So I'm very excited about having this one, so that'll be great. Next up we have, yes, The Baby Made at Christmas uh, by Lillian Darcy. I believe this is the second book in the Cherry Sisters series. I'd have to look. Again, I read the first book earlier this year, so I'm happy now to have the second one. I do, to be honest, probably have this one as an ebook copy, but um, again, not only am I reading these physical books, but I'm collecting them as well. So even if I've read it in ebook format, I am still want to collect the physical editions if at all possible. So yeah, so I've got that one. And then I've got, oh, this is an older one. The Cowboy and the Bride by Marin Thomas. This is the first book in the Fatherhood series. The Fatherhood series is not a series that you at all need to read in order, so I'll show, show you guys the cover. Um, it's kind of just all books that deal with single dads, kind of an idea. Um, yeah, and I don't remember why I decided to pick this one up, but it's from June of 04, and I thought, why not? I think maybe because it was the first book in the Fatherhood series, I thought just for funsies, let me see if somebody has it, and I'm pretty sure I paid a penny for it, plus shipping. So yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, and last but not least, I don't care for these, um, these sticky things because they are like sticky on the inside and it's, I, I don't want the books to get sticky. Yes, I have this one as an ebook, but I want a physical copy of it because I really want to, like, I, I can read it very easily on the, on the ebook copy too, but I thought this would be a fun one to maybe get to in the near future. And this is, uh, by Lori Robinson. It's Saving, um, uh, Marina, M-A-R-I-N-A. This is a historical romance novel from the Harlequin historical line that takes place, it says it's Americana. On the side here, they always try and list what the time period is. American West, Regency, Medieval, what have you. 20th century, World War II, um, <clears throat> Americana. This takes place during the Salem Witch Trials. Isn't that neat? Um, I will read the back of it for you guys. 
Sea Captain Richard Tarr must claim his child after the death of his estranged wife. Arriving in Salem, he's shocked to discover his daughter is in the care of uh, Mariana Lindquist, a rumored witch. This beautiful gent Gentile woman awakens unfamiliar feelings in Richard. As the threat of the Salem witch hunters grows, he knows he must protect misunderstood Mariana, I think it's Mariana, uh, at all costs. Little does he know that, um, that with uh, her helping him bond with his little girl, she might just be saving him right back. I just think that for a Harlequin historical line, for them to do a novel that is set outside of the, the big three, as I like to call them, the Regency, the American West, the Medieval, and to delve into something that was not a great moment in American history, let's be honest. The Salem Witch Trials were not a shining beacon of light in the, uh, you know, history of uh, the U.S. Um, they weren't they weren't the U.S. though yet. They were still a British colony, so we'll blame Britain. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but no, but you know what I mean? In the history of the U.S., this was not a shining beacon point. And to still do a book set in that time period is very, very interesting to me. And this one really appealed to me. I have a thing with the Salem Witch Trials. I don't know what it is. I'm fascinated by them. Um, so yeah, so... Um, when I was looking through to get these books and I, I like to order 10 into 10 is my limit. 10 costs me around $20. So even though I say like this book may have cost me a penny when you factor in shipping to Canada, which can be wickedly expensive. Um, it, um, it, it, it can, they can be almost about $2 a book, but I figured, you know what? I get to pick and choose which one I want. Unlike when you go to the used bookstore and you're kind of like, this is your selection. I get to really kind of delve into and pick ones that look really good. Um, so I think you guys understand what I mean. I mean, you can pick at a used bookstore, but you have a bigger selection with the Amazon Marketplace. So yes, yeah, so I'm really, really thrilled to have this one. Uh, a Captain Comes to Salem, it says. So yes, I knew I had to get this one. So that's my little book haul. Um, so I will get into what I've been reading today. I have not read anything on audiobook today. Um, the reason is, and I think I mentioned this yesterday, um, Reed Bliss, uh, my contacts at Harlequin for the Reed Bliss videos, got in touch with me yesterday about a video coming out in December. And um, so there's some books I have to move around my TBR a bit, which is absolutely fine um, because it means more Christmas books. But I'm going, that means I'm going to have Christmas books I can tell you guys about in November. And then you can maybe add them to your holiday book bingo for December, shameless plug on my behalf. Um, so yeah, so, um, so I, I will have five books that I will be reading, um, over the course of the next few weeks at the end of the end of November. So I, uh, I had sent, like she said, pretty much it was like, let us know which books you want to read. They're so great about that, that like, you know, let us know which ones you want. And I went through and I looked and I'm like, these are the ones I'd like to read if that's okay. Well, I didn't hear back from her until like I emailed her last night. And I'm typically up about seven in the morning and that's when I kind of listen to audiobooks. But I actually um, listened to a couple podcasts this morning. They did email me back by like nine, nine thirty, so I could have very easily popped in an audiobook, but then I got busy. <clears throat> you know, showered, dressed, out the door, stuff like that. So I didn't have time to just sit. So that's why I was cold, kind of holding off. I didn't want to start an audiobook when I could start one of the new ones that I want to be reading. So I'm very, very excited. Um, I will be starting off with The Christmas Sisters by Sarah Morgan. That book right there <laughs> and I will be listening to it on audio I own I purchased that copy um, from where did I get that from I think I got it for 40 off at the Walmart maybe <laughs> but yeah I bought that one at Walmart I also pre-ordered and received a copy of it on Kindle so now I will be listening to it on audio from script but I figured I bought, literally I've bought two copies of this book. I can absolutely download and listen to the audio from script because it's a longer audio book and I just figure, you know, guy, you guys know me, audio is my preferred method for reading books. So that is what I'm going to be going with. Um, so that'll be started tomorrow and I'll give you guys an update on that one tomorrow. My current ebook is called um, Do You Feel It Too? by uh, Nicola Ren Ren Rendell, I think. Guys, I'm really enjoying this book. I am pleasantly surprised. I will be honest. When I saw the cover on NetGalley, because this is a NetGalley read, I was a little hesitant. I'm not loving the cover. I, I, I'm i sorry. There's just, yeah, there's a hot half-naked guy on the cover. Well, we don't even know if he's good looking. You can't see his face. Not that it matters. Look at that body. But I just don't love it. I just think it's kind of odd. But it was the premise that really got to me. And it's about a guy who kind of has a show about ghost hunting. 
and he falls in love with a local girl. I talked about this briefly yesterday. Well, I really started, I started reading it a bit last night and I really delved into it today. Oh my gosh, it is so good. The writing is fantastic. There is some great humor in this book and dialogue between the characters. They both have wicked senses of humor and it's a lot of fun so far and I'm really enjoying it. So essentially, you know, he's like this ghost hunter and he's in Savannah, Georgia to kind of do this series. Sorry, the cat's sniffing the, uh, the box that the books came in or the big bag. And, um, he immediately like on page one kind of sees this girl named Lily. His name is Gabe and, um, kind of immediately falls for her. Well, the whole thing is very, very much a physical relationship beginning. But then, of course, they're going to start falling for each other on a more emotional level, which is great, which is what's starting to happen now in the book. I'm about 40% of the way through it. I plan on getting some more of it read tonight, um, so I'm looking forward to that. But I will let you guys know that this book is extremely spicy. Extremely spicy. Um, you know, like, wow. I... I can take a good adult content scene as much as the next person. It doesn't bother me in the least. But this one actually, I'm a little disappointed that they had to go and make them that. I didn't need that much information. Let's put it that way. Um, like it was like a chapter and a half or like two whole chapters. I'm like, really? Like, was that kind of needed? But it did lead to a very funny scene afterward because um, she's, she's a sound technician, technician, excuse me. And she's wired the entire house with like these like microphones and stuff. So they go upstairs to do their thing and it all gets caught on video on, not on video, on audio. And he accidentally emails it to his producer and they think it's ghosts because <laughs> all you're hearing is like stuff banging against the walls, moaning, you know, all these things. So it really does lead to a very funny scene or a very funny the story's taking a very funny and humorous turn like one of those you know oops you know that shouldn't have happened or what's the worst that could happen kind of an idea well it's this um so that i i do appreciate that but this does is heavy in adult content guys i got to the point where i was just flipping like let's get to the next thing let's i'm over this yeah they did their thing good for them they both enjoyed it let's continue with the story um so yeah so that's typically where I find myself a lot of the time now with some of those scenes is that I will skim them and see if there's any important plot points that are happening during them typically not um but I do like to, to check um but typically I do tend to flip through them now because I, you know it is it's it's this it's always the same thing to be completely honest guys You've read one adult content scene, you've read them all, kind of an idea. Depending on, some authors can do it a lot better than others. Um, she actually did it very well. Like, it wasn't a badly written scene. I was just kind of over it. And I wanted to get back to the story. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm really, really enjoying that one. I am still reading, of course, uh, the Nancy Drew book, uh, Mystery, The Mystery or The Secret at Redgate Farm. I can never remember the name of it. And I'm enjoying that one a great deal. They have now... Um, uh, Bess and George and Nancy have now arrived at the Redgate farm and of course Peril always hits them when they're going somewhere um, you know her car gets stuck in a ditch because there's a rainstorm and she almost hit somebody and all these things and you know if Nancy's around disaster is bound to follow <laughs> that's that's what I'm reading from these books and last but not least excuse me for reaching around here I should have had this in front of me um, hiccup sorry guys I plan to start this one tonight this is The Mavericks, Christmas to Remember by Christy Jeffries. This is the book that you guys picked for me to read um, for my Harlequin Anticipated Reads video. So I'm going to be starting this one today. I'm super duper excited. Um, and yeah, so I will let you guys know more about this one tomorrow. But anyway, guys, that is it for this day's, today's clip. And um, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. Hi, guys. It is Wednesday, November the 14th, and it is just after 7 at night. And I thought I would sit down with you guys and give you a quick reading update before I settle down onto the couch to do some reading and have a cup of tea. Um, so I just noticed in the viewfinder that you guys can see my new friend Lenny. Would you like to meet Lenny? <laughs> yes, I buy stuffed animals, don't judge me. Um, Garrett and I were at Walmart last weekend and um, we were looking for, um, we were grabbing cat treats. So we were in the cat, uh, the pet aisle, uh, the pet aisles I should say. And at the end caps they have all the, um, you can buy like little Santa hats and stuff like that for your dogs and cats. My cats would never put up with that. But they had this and he's sitting there and it said it was a dog toy. And I'm like, 
I have to rescue him from being mauled to death by some beast, by some dog. Um, so I had to get him. And his name is Lenny. Like I said, Lenny the Llama. I love llamas. I don't know what it is. Oh, I just poked myself in the eye with his, uh, with his ear. I love llamas. I have a mug. I'll have to remember to try and show you guys sometime in this vlog. Um, next time I'm having a cup of tea. And uh, when I record, I got a mug at Walmart and it is a llama. It's one of those color changing mugs. Um, so when you pour hot liquid into it, it changes. And when you pour hot liquid into it, he has presents on his back, like Christmas presents. And it says, fa la 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 llama. <laughs> but yeah, it was so funny. I got this home and my husband's like, what are you going to do with him? I'm like, he's going to hang out with me on the couch. But um, we were both laughing going, it's a dog toy, but it's a really cute dog toy. And I'm like, I don't understand. Maybe it was mislabeled, but no. Is he going to do it now? Ah, oh, hold on. <laughs> Both cats just jumped. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, sorry if that was loud for any of you wearing headphones. Yes, he does squeak. But isn't he adorable? I had to save him and bring him home. So he's going to be part of my Christmas decor now. So, oops, sorry, the camera's kind of looking, falling over. So I'm, my bookshelf, I'm probably going to sit him up on top of my bookshelf at some point um, once we get the rest of the Christmas decorations out. So yeah, so that's my game plan. So anyway, today was semi-uneventful. I had a meeting this morning, um, a financial meeting this morning. So I dealt with that. I'm very happy at the outcome. So the outcome has taken a lot of stress off me that I was having, which is a good thing. And then um, I came home and then I took my husband to work and I came back from that and I um, actually sat down and finally recorded two videos. I was late. I was sh I should have recorded over the weekend, but I didn't. I got lazy, to be completely honest. And I kept meaning to do it all this week and I just haven't been feeling up to it. I think I've been a little extra stressed this week because of the financial stuff that I was just mentioning. Um, so now that that's dealt with, I felt a lot better. And, um, like I knew how the outcome was going to be, but until you actually do the thing, um, like even though you've been told, yes, we can do that thing until you've signed the papers to do that thing, you know, it, it, it kind of still, it still weighs on you because anything could change. Right. Um, so yeah, so I'm super duper happy, but so I filmed my two videos for this week, which you guys will have already seen. One is going to be posted tonight. It just finished doing its editing thing and I'm just going to upload it to YouTube. And then the other one, I'm debating on putting it up tomorrow or Friday. I'm thinking I might put it up Friday morning. Um, that's my thought process. Now they'll give me tomorrow to, to edit it. And then after that, uh, after I filmed those videos, I headed out for dinner um, because my mom and my aunt and my dad, um, that's his sister, um, they play cards at the senior center um, every Wednesday. And it's out by where my parents live. So typically now on Wednesday nights, they tend to go out for dinner. Him, um, my aunt, and my mom. And, um, they were inviting my brother and sister-in-law and my niece and nephew. And my mom's like, did you want to come on like, um, a free meal? Yes, please. <laughs> so I went out for dinner. We went to Applebee's. I'll be honest, guys. I was not overly impressed. Um, I had the pasta. I mean, it was good, but I could have made better at home. I should learn unless I'm going to Boston pizza, which is like my favorite restaurant. Um, unless I'm going there, I, I should not get pasta out. I, I should have gone... Originally, because I looked at the menu ahead of time, because I am an extremely picky eater. Um, I know there's always something, there's always chicken fingers or something like that that I will eat. But um, I, I, I looked at the menu ahead of time and I saw that they had fish and chips. And I thought, oh, I'll get fish and chips. And then I saw this pasta and it was like um, a tortellini with a white sauce. And it had some dried tomatoes, which, you know, all sounds good in theory. But it was far too garlicky, you know what I mean? Um, so I was a little disappointed in that. Um... And yeah, like I said, I could probably do better at home. I should have gone with my friend. Always go with your gut instinct, people. Always. Well, not always, unless your gut instinct is telling you to do something really bad. Um, most of the time, go with your gut instinct <laughs> when it comes to food choices. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so I was a little bit disappointed in that. So I just got home about 20 minutes ago. And like I said, I was just finishing editing that video. I'm now going to post it up. And yeah, and then I'm going to sit down and do some reading tonight. Um, Lenny and I. Lenny and I are going to sit down and do a little reading tonight. Um, so I have not been reading a lot today, as you can probably hear from my description of the day. I've been in and, in and out all day, um, but I got a little bit of reading done, so I thought I'd share with you the books. Both books are physical books, you guys. I am almost finished. My first plan is actually to finish reading, um, Do You Feel It Too by Nicola Rendell, I think is the, the author. Of course, I'll have the picture up here for you guys to see. 
Um, I'm about 90% of the way done. So I should finish that one tonight. So that's super duper awesome. And so that was some of the reading I did today. I did that this morning. And then I picked up The Mavericks Christmas to Remember by Christy Jeffries. I mentioned this one yesterday. I have started this one. So, so far I am really enjoying it. Um, so the premise of this book is it's about a woman who, um, she's working and she falls off a ladder and hits her head. So that's where I am now is that she's now just woken up in the emergency room. Um, there were people in the office when she fell and they drove her to the local medical center or whatever and she's been checked out or she's being checked out. She has memory right up until when she fell um, and she remembers everybody else. But then there's this new guy who came in with his buddy into this office and she takes one look at him and she's like, oh, I know him. He's my fiance when they've never actually met ever um, because she turned and noticed him and then fell. Um, and hit her head. So she believes that he's her fiance. And so the premise of the story is that he's kind of going to play off on that until she gets her memory back. And of course, you know, they're going to actually fall in love. So it'll be super adorable. So far, I'm really enjoying it. I'm only, I'm not very far. I may be only about 25 pages into it, but so far, I'm really, really enjoying it. The other one that I've been reading and loving so far, and I'm reading this in a physical copy. I know I said to you guys yesterday, I'm going to pick this up as an audiobook. But I just kept looking at this on my shelf and I'm like, I need to read it as a physical copy. So I am currently reading The Christmas Sisters by Sarah Morgan. Guys, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yes, I have little tabbies in it um, because I want to try and get this done within five days or so. Um, I have tomorrow and Friday and Saturday and Sunday with nothing much to do. I don't have any appointments or anything like that. So that's a bonus. So I'm hoping to get sit down and get a lot of reading done. It has been, other than um, my little Harlequin books, which are pretty easy to get through, it's been a while since I've actually sat down and read a physical book, like, of this caliber. So this is, this I'm really enjoying it. It's almost like a novelty to me <laughs> at this point. I did start to listen to it on audio. I listened to about 10 minutes on audio, and I liked it. But I thought, I just, something, I wanted to read it in a physical copy. I don't know what it was. So yeah, so, so far I'm enjoying it. This is about three sisters who are all adopted, and they um, all head home back to the Scottish Highlands for Christmas. Um, and kind of their adventures and misadventures. Um, you know, one is married and she's a stay-at-home mom and she's thinking about going back into the workforce. Another one has a big secret that she's kind of, um, doesn't know if she wants to share. And the third one, I think the third sister is like maybe looking for romance. Um, workaholic Hannah is the one who's got the secret. And then there is stay-at-home mom Beth. Um, and then Posey isn't sure she's living her best life. But with her parents, depending on her, making a change seems risky. So she might go against, I guess, what her parents kind of want her to do. So, so far I'm enjoying it. I am about, bloop, check my fancy dancy bookmark here. I'm on chapter three. I'm only about 40 pages into this. So yeah, I'm hoping to get some more reading done on this. Excuse me, the hiccups tonight. Um, so yeah, so anyway, guys, that is it for this little clip. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Hi, guys. It is Thursday, the 15th of November. And it's just before five o'clock at night. Um, I am coming to you not with a book update right now, but with a weather update. It's snowing. Yay! I love snow. You guys can't tell the fact I already have a Christmas tree up in my living room. <laughs> yes, I do enjoy the snow. Um, we've had a bit of snow already so far this season. Um, last weekend, you know, you wake up in the morning and there's a little bit on the car and stuff like that. But this is supposed to be the first major accumulation. Um, five to ten centimeters. So I'm not exactly sure... As soon as I stop, start this, hit this camera to record, I've got one cat chewing on the Christmas tree and the other one is scratching his little scratch pad thing that he's got. Crazy cats. Anyway, I was just out and about um, getting some stuff done. I had to go to the pharmacy and pick up a prescription and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, it started to snow and they were saying on the radio, you know, oh, it's five to ten centimeters. Like they're saying is, they're saying it like it's five to ten feet of snow that's going to fall. It's really not that much. Um, but yeah, so I thought I would give you guys a little, uh, video footage of the snow. Um, it's going to get worse, like, as the night goes on, it's, it's going to accumulate and it's going to stick and the roads are going to be unpleasant. So it's not going to be fun when I go and pick my husband up from work tonight. But, um, yeah, I'm going to show you guys the snow, but I will be back later to give you guys a reading update. Talk to you soon. Bye. As promised you guys, the snow. Yep, same same picture from yesterday. No, my car is not out there anymore. It's parked in the back. That's actually visitors parking out front. <laughs> I tend to do that at night when I know I'm going back out within the next like hour or so. Um, but yeah, it's really, really wet packing snow. Um, it won't be here for very long. Um, I'm sure it's going to melt with, by today or tomorrow or something like that.
but I'm going to enjoy how pretty it is while I can. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Good morning, BookTube. It is uh, Friday morning. It is uh, November the 16th, and it is just before 8 a.m. I uh, forgot to do a clip last night. Sorry for my, just my computer starting. I apologize for that. Um, by the time I got home from bring, taking my, uh, picking my husband up from work, I was exhausted. Um, the drive wasn't that... Sorry, Corbin's protesting because I'm not petting him currently. Good morning, BookTube. It is Friday morning. It is November the 16th, and it's just before 8 a.m. Um, I've made my coffee. I'm sitting out here on the couch. As you can see, I literally just woke up maybe a half an hour ago. Um, so sorry for the appearance. <laughs> my first thing in the morning look. Um, I apologize also for not um, doing a clip last night. I had planned to as soon as I got home from taking my husband to work, but I was so tired. I just went right to bed. Um, but yeah, so I thought I'd do a quick little update on my reading. Goran is protesting because I'm not currently petting him. <laughs> I am sitting here for your petting enjoyment. Why aren't you doing so, he says. <laughs> He's literally sitting on the footstool in front of me. But anyway, so yes, quick reading update. I finished a book yesterday, you guys. Cat fur. I finished reading um, Surrendering to the Sheriff by Dolores Lawson. I think it's book seven in the Sweetwater Ranch series. I listened to this one on audio. Um, it was narrated by a gentleman by the name of Adam something. No, that's not it, Gorn. Adam something or other. Sorry, I can't remember his name. Um, but he did a really good job. Um, this was the continuing story, of course, of the Sweetwater Ranch series. Um, <clears throat> the overarching um, background for this, this series is um, the main character's mother has been accused of murder, of murdering her lover like 20 years ago when... Um, the main characters were just kids and she's kind of been on the lam this whole time and at the first book she arrives back in town and she's been put in jail and she's going to be going to trial so all the books kind of follow um her kids and various other people the um deputies and sheriffs and stuff in town um and uh different things that sort of involve the case so this story was about kendall who is our main um who is the main character that um the woman accused of murder jewel it's her sister her much younger sister um, and a gentleman by the name of Aiden, who I believe he's a, sh well, um, surrendering to the sheriff. He'd be the sheriff. Um, and, um, touching your toes. Sorry. Um, <laughs> distracted by cat. And, um, uh, they had a, they had a romance together when they were much younger. So this is a second chance romance. And, um, they met up again lately, uh, at a bar and kind of had a one night stand. And of course, as this usually happens in these kind of books, she ended up pregnant so now someone is after her because they're trying to keep her sister, like, they're, they're going after her um, because something about keeping the sister quiet and the truth or something like that. So this is the second last book in the series, the, the last one I'm also going to be reading this month and listening to on audio from the Audible Romance Package. <clears throat> this is, I don't like saying it, but I think this is really one series that you would benefit from reading in order only because... So many things kind of happen that, that have to do with the overall plot line of the story. Like, each book is different. It's a different standalone. It has an, a, a start and a finish. So, you know, like, there is a, a definite end to the story. But then, of course, there's this overarching story. Only the last two books are available on Audible. Well, from the romance package. I don't... Yeah, no, the rest of them aren't even available on Audible. On audio, excuse me. But they're, they're, they're easy enough reads. I mean, they're short. I think they're... Are they intrigue novels? I believe they're intrigue novels. The picture will be up here so you guys will be able to see. But yeah, so I finished that yesterday, started and finished it yesterday, so that's not too shabby. Um, the rest of the reading I got done was not a lot. I started reading Proof of Innocence by Leona Worth. I am maybe not even the first chapter into it. This is the last book in that series, in the Capital Canine Unit series. And it is, we're finally getting resolution to the, again, the overarching case that's happening throughout these books. And um, this is about Erin, and um, she is the one who was accused of murdering her boyfriend in the first book. Um, a senator's son was killed and she's been on the run ever since like for all the books so now um, it's all gonna come to a head and they're all gonna you know stuff is gonna get wrapped up so I'm very much looking forward to it I plan to get a lot of that read today my plan for the day today is doing a lot of reading and knitting because I have nothing to do today other than take my husband to work so that's great it's kind of a snowy day outside um, I will get some pictures of the snow um, before I uh, um, sit down and do other things so you guys can see what it looks like outside because it's very very pretty actually so the other book I got some reading done in yesterday but I plan to get a bunch more today 
is The Maverick's Christmas Tour, Remember by Christy Jeffries. I haven't read a lot more of this. I maybe read another 20 pages of it yesterday. Again, I didn't have a lot of reading time yesterday. Um, I mean, I did start and finish an audiobook, but that's a little different. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying this one. I plan to get a lot further on this one today. Um, and then the last one that I did get some good progress on, and part of my goal, is The Christmas Sisters by Sarah Morgan. I'm trying to figure out how to hold this up for you guys. I love this book. I am a good chunk of the way through it. About 160 pages. Um, this is so, so good. Oh my gosh, you guys. Classic Sarah Morgan. Um, <clears throat> she just does Christmas books so, so well. Um, so this one um, I've mentioned, I think, before. It's about three sisters who were adopted. They are biological sisters to each other. And they were adopted after something happened to their mother um, by their mother's friend. And they were moved to Scotland from the U.S. And how each of them are kind of dealing with different things going on in their lives. Um, the oldest girl, Hannah, has a, seri a, a, a series. She has a, um, an issue that she's dealing with and she doesn't know exactly how to, to deal with it. The middle sister, Beth is a stay-at-home mom who wants to go back to work but her husband wants her to have another baby so um there's some conflict there and then the youngest sister posy still both the older sisters live back in the u.s now but the youngest sister posy lives with her mom and dad or her adopted mom and dad she doesn't remember her parents very much she was very young when this this thing happened and um again even at this point i i have a guesstimation on what happened but i'm not absolutely certain it hasn't been revealed what exactly the thing was that happened 25 years ago to their parents. Um, so anyway, um, uh, but the mother, their mother, Suzanne, like their adopted mother, is suffering nightmares from it and things like that. Um, but Posey lives in town, in this small little town in the Scottish Highlands, and um, she is being kind of groomed, if you will, to take over the cafe and bake shop that, their, that her mother owns and, um, you know, the lodge and stuff that they run, and she doesn't really want to, um, but she doesn't know how to tell anybody that. Um, so the story is kind of told in four perspectives. Um, each chapter, you kind of get it at the heading of each chapter of, of whose who's story you're listening to at that point. Between the three girls, um, Hannah, Beth, and Posey, as well as um, the mother, Susanna. So yeah, I am really enjoying this. Um, I do have my little pages marked on where I need to get to every day because I want to get this done um, sooner rather than later. I'm hoping to actually have this done by Sunday night. Um, so a bit more reading done on this today and over the weekend, um, but it is the Create Your Own Readathon this weekend, so I hope, um, obviously I will get this done, but yes, and guys, I've been loving reading a physical book. <laughs> it's good, this is going to sound weird because I read so much on audio and ebook, but I almost forgot how, I, not forgot how, but you know what I mean? I forgot how joyful it was just to sit, and it was funny because I went to bingo with my mom yesterday and I brought this with me to read, um, during the break and stuff. And I had it sitting on the table and I had a couple people come up to me asking me what they thought about it or what I thought about it and I'm like oh my gosh it's so good you need to pick it up but it's an author that I don't think a lot of people are overtly familiar with or if they are they're familiar with her more contemporary romance stories whereas this one's more of a women's fiction I, I don't like using that terminology um but it is what it is it's a story instead of it revolving around a romance it's revolving around the family and the girls and uh, women I should say they're not really girls and um and their lives um as opposed to a, a true romance there is a romance in here though so so don't despair my romance fans there is definitely a romance in here but anyway guys <clears throat> i needed my coffee because i'm losing my voice and i'll talk to you tonight i got